This from the New York Times, October 26, 2019, the impeachment inquiry this week in six developments. Details of a quid pro quo entered the deep state. Steve Bannon is back, revenge of the Republicans, and more. A Republican resistance emerges, and so does Deep State. Steve Bannon is back, and so is Anonymous. So many developments, so little time. It's okay. We'll crap, recap the week for you. Damning testimony. The top American diplomat in Ukraine gave a vivid and impassioned account on Tuesday of how multiple senior administration officials told him that President Trump blocked security aid to Ukraine and refused to meet the country's leader until he agreed to publicly pledge to investigate Mr. Trump's political rivals. In testimony to impeach investigators delivered in defiance of state Department orders the diplomat William B. Taylor Jr. sketched out in remarkable detail a quid pro quo measure campaign on Ukraine that Mr. Trump and his allies have long denied. He said the president sought to condition the entire United States relationship with Ukraine, including 391 million aid package on a promise that the country would publicly investigate Mr. Trump's political rivals, including former Vice President Joseph R. Biden Jr. and his family. His account implicated Mr. Trump, citing multiple sources inside the government. It's been a week of pushback by members of the Republican Party. On Wednesday, House Republicans staged a protest at Capitol that delayed a crucial deposition in the impeachment inquiry. Chanting, let us in, let us in, about two dozen members pushed past Capitol Police officers to enter the secure rooms of the House Intelligence Committee, where investigators have been conducting private interviews. On Thursday, state Republicans introduced a resolution condemning the impeachment inquiry. Senior Republican aides said the resolution was not expected to come to the Senate floor for a vote until next week at the early the president also got some encouragement from Steve Bannon, the former White House chief strategist, and other supporters and former aides. They've launched a new radio show from Mr. Bannon's basement called A War Room to help fight impeachment. And finally, Mr. Trump has canceled subscriptions to the New York Times and the Washington Post. Officials in the West Wing and on Thursday announced that copies of the two papers would no longer be delivered to the White House. The administration is moving to force federal agencies to end their subscriptions as well. On Friday, a federal judge ruled that the House is legally engaged in an impeachment inquiry, delivering a major victory to House Democrats and undercutting arguments by President Trump and Republicans that the investigation is a sham. Representative Adam Schiff above is among those leading the inquiry. The House Judiciary Committee is entitled to view secret grand jury evidence gathered by the special counsel, Robert S. Mueller, the third Judge Beryl A. Howell of the Federal District Court for the District of Columbia ruled in a 75-page opinion. Attorney General William P. Barr had withheld the materials from lawmakers. Nameless, faceless, and voiceless, the CIA officer who first set off the impeachment inquiry seemed to be practically the embodiment of the deep state that the president has long accused of trying to take him down. But over the last three weeks, the so-called deep state has emerged from the shadows in the form of real live government officials who have defied a White House attempt to block cooperation with House impeachment investigators and provide evidence that largely back up the whistleblower. Here's the warning letter received by one of the witnesses, Laura Cooper, the military's Russia-Ukraine expert, before she testified. Also worth noting, an anonymous Trump administration official who pushed a September 2018 essay in the New York Times about the act of resistance to the president's agenda and behavior from within his own administration will publish a book next month. We travel to the front lines of the war in Ukraine, a bare-bones fight against Russian-backed separatists. The war there has killed 13,000 people, put a large part of Ukraine under Russian control, and dragged on for five years. It was almost forgotten by the outside world until it became a backdrop to the impeachment inquiry. Ukrainian soldiers on the front line were jolted when American military aid was suspended in July. While the aid was restored in time to prevent any military setbacks, it took a heavy psychological toll, they said, striking at their confidence that their backers in Washington stood, stood solidly behind them. The president and his allies have said that there was no quid pro quo with Ukraine because Ukrainian officials did not know military aid had been blocked. But word of the aid freeze had reached high-level officials there, according to interviews and documents. One of the two indicted associates of President Trump's personal lawyer, Rudolph Giuliani, tied to cease to um, secease to the president himself, saying that some of the evidence gathered in the campaign finance investigation could be subject to executive privilege. The argument was raised by a defense lawyer in federal court in Manhattan as the two associates, Lev Parnas above and Igor Furman, pleaded not guilty f to federal charges that they had made illegal campaign contributions to political candidates in the United States in exchange for potential influence. Mm -hmm.